when I, when I look at it, use of biocontrol in greenhouse crops globally, I think Canada is, is one of the world leaders, if not the world leader in terms of use of biocontrols in floriculture. There's a lot of, um, you know, historically biocontrol sort of started in vegetable crops and a lot of the tools that are used there have been adapted over time for use in floriculture and, I, and in the Niagara region of course that's sort of floriculture central for, for, for Canada. Um, they are using biocontrols bio very successfully. Still a lot to do. I think we still have a ways to go. There are still certain pests which create challenges, certain crops which create challenges, but uh, that's what research is here to do and that's what uh, we need as researchers to do is listen to what are the needs, what are the needs as far as research and what are the needs as far as um, getting that information out to, to, to growers in a usable format. We actually just completed a survey just to find out sort of the state of play for biocontrol in, in Ontario. And some of the comments that why, why growers are not using biocontrol is perhaps the best way to sort of uh, get into this. And um, some, it's too expensive still, uh, it takes too long from application to seeing effect. Um, there's no good bios for this particular pest or this particular crop. So those are still some of the challenges. I think there's still, however, there's a bit of a legacy of, of the pesticide head there still. Um, biocontrol, as we know, is it's not pesticides. So you have to approach it with a different mindset and with a different approach and different level of expectations and perhaps different uses, you know, and use pesticides. I've got one pesticide cures all my ills. Biocontrol, you've got to perhaps mix and match a little bit and adapt it to your individual situation. So it's more of a, more of a complex rather than a recipe-based uh, pest management strategy. You know, I was with a grower this morning, actually, early on, and how they're slowly changing and recognizing the value, say, of, of preventative treatments up front rather than chasing after a problem all the way through production. And that, that up front is, is largely based on use of good biocontrol tools or compatible chemicals or chemistries with those biocontrol tools. I think if you look at the, uh, the predators and parasitoids, they've been around for a long time and they haven't really seen any new ones. There's a couple of predatory mites sort of on the market, off the market, on the market again. Um, there, are some, there are plenty of new microbials coming onto the market, I should say, um, from uh, fungal products for control of insect pests, perhaps even mite pests, but also a lot of what we call um, biostimulants or bioinoculants, um, or in some cases uh, bio, uh, biofungicides for control of root diseases. So those, there's an increasing range of those. The problem is which ones are good, which ones are just sort of uh, snake oil products, and that's part of the research we're involved in. I think they have some real um, pluses to them, not just in terms of their ability to control root diseases, but some of the other effects that they can have on plants.